Uh, that was about 20 minutes, a little bit longer than I wanted it to be for part one that really doesn't go over much, but uh, there's a lot, a lot of content in this video. So let's keep to it uh, and get right back to it. So last, we ended up uh, creating the left and right buttons. We haven't really tested anything yet and we're just making sure all our logic here works okay so right now I'm gonna open up the common event and just want to verify what's going on make sure it matches what my other events doing so I'm gonna open up my other project eventing a picture menu and I have oh we forgot to add the player weight I have it set to 10 frames uh, we're not going to worry about sounds. We need to add a weight for the controls. And that's it. And then we'll get to the next part. Cool. So adding the player weight. And then a weight for the button press. Okay. So. Adding a weight for the button press is going to be 10 frames. Just gonna copy, copy that, paste it here, and the no sounds needed. And I already forgot. This is why I would love to <laughs> love to have a second screen, but one one day, one day at a time. Um, the player weight, of course, player weight. Oops. Adding the player weight to the beginning. Uh, this makes sure that the player doesn't move. So we don't want to wait for completion. We're going to add a weight for 10 frames. Okay. All right. Now to the next part. Um, so now that we've done that, we and we know what we've updated the variable based on the keyboard movement, or left and right. Now we need to uh, reset the images. So they tint the selected image, which I don't think I actually did. Yeah, I did not do that. So we're going to tint the image. And they went dark. I'm just going to go dark. They went with something different. I'm just going to tint it dark, just to make things easier. We don't want it to wait. We want it to be one frame. And we want it to be instant. With theirs, they tint the picture at 136, whatever that is. I think they tint it uh, lighter. Um, I just wanted to click a button, so no worries there. So what we want to do is reset all the tints. And this is where I did, uh, I noticed a little bug in what they're doing. For them, I don't know why it was working there. For them, maybe it wasn't. Um, but I followed their tutorial and it wasn't working. I was getting this flickering effect and I'm pretty sure because this one frame compared to this frame, it turned everything on and off. And so I, I saw it. Maybe that's just because my computer, but, um, something a little bit better would be to, when we create these if conditions here, because we're checking, okay, what is variable one is button one selected is button 2 selected, button 3 selected. Then we do X, Y, and Z, right? We do 1, 2, or 3. So let me go over that. So we open this up. We have our buttons. Our current selected button is 4, or sorry, is going to be 1, 2, or 3, right? So now we're going to check that variable. Another conditional branch. Is current selected button 1? Okay. I'm just going to copy and paste and say 2 and 3. Then we want to uh, tint these pictures. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tint the pictures to dark, one frame, no way. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste. I like co I like to copy and paste. You're going to see me do it all the time. Three and 
before. So, all I'm going to do is copy this. And so, if bun one selected, sorry, I did this wrong. That should be normal. That should be normal. Button one, which is number two, should be dark, and the other one should be normal, right? We'll kind of tint it so that it's darker, show like it's selected. Again, this is really for using the navigation. You could remove this if you only want to stick to touch, okay? And all this events is strictly for navigating the by using the keyboard. You, you don't need any of this for the touch. Okay. Uh, but if you want both, you'll have to keep both, of course. So I'm just going to copy and paste all of this here. Oops. Want to spacebar here. I'm going to make this normal. And this one's going to be dark. Paste it again here. It's going to be normal, and the button 3 is going to be dark, okay? That's all we're doing, making those changes there, okay? Um, they tint everything first, but it takes one frame, and I think that causes a little bit of hiccup, but that's okay. I prefer to do it my way because it just it sets everything in one frame. Uh, and it's I think it's a cleaner logic, so whatever you want to do it's okay um, so for their buttons they have an items button a skills button status save load options these are different scenes that you can push to there's a little bit of a script that's going to be required that's going to push the scene so when you have a selected button then we are going to be expected that you press OK and that's going to make you enter the menu for that specific menu. So button one, we're gonna stick we're gonna have it go to the scene item menu. S button two is gonna go to scene status, and then button three is gonna go to scene save. Okay. And these are just all scripts. So I'm just gonna copy this right here. And when we we're going to have this loop still this should be in our loop if we press the OK button and if button 1 is pressed or sorry if current selected button is 1 then we're going to do this oops I need to actually go to the script and not just paste over it. We're going to scene manager push scene item. Okay. And these are all predefined scenes in RPG Maker core code somewhere somewhere there. Right? Okay. So if OK is being pressed, random is one, do that. Two, three, four. We're not we don't have a fourth button, so no worries there. So I'm going to just copy and paste this one. I'm just going to change to button 2 and button 3. So current selected button is 3. And that's how I want, I want people to think about variables sometimes is that you should name them clearly and so that they make sense when you read it. If current selected button is 3, do this. Okay. And let me just go back here and copy and paste. I just need to copy scene skill and scene status. Paste scene skill and scene status. Okay. Hit apply. And so this is one of those tutorials that you really should just, you're going to have to go power through the whole thing. Uh, there are times where you can just go check it out. Um, but there's only so much you can see logically. We can check it out now. So we can, you can check it out at multiple stages throughout here. Let me turn down this. Okay. So, oops, I tinted, it looks like I tinted the, the background image. 
good thing. So we can navigate. You can see me pressing the right arrow, left arrow, and once I hit OK or Enter, you can see it's working. But I can't exit the menu at this time. Okay, no worries, but it's looking really good. Tint. This should be number two. There we go. Oops. So, what's next? So, we're pushing the right scenes. Cool. Then, we need to check if the cancel button is being triggered, and then we're going to remove the entirety of the menu. So, they erase all the pictures and they break the loop, and then they wait a frame. Okay? Almost done. Almost done. So. If button cancel is being pressed, and again, I think is being triggered. I knew one of these was different, so they're both is being triggered, is being triggered. So is being triggered. And this one should also be is being triggered. Then we're going to erase all the pictures. So erase one, two, three, and four. Okay. And we want to wait a frame, which I don't think I do in my other one. So let me go back to my completed project and see what I do. We have, we show the pictures, we push the scene on OK, we erase, and we break the loop. And so I don't have a wait. I just have a wait at the end after the loop. OK? OK. Very good. So break the loop and add a wait at the end of 10 frames. Now we should be able to escape. So this is the whole thing. Let's check it out. Okay. We can move around, no problem. We can hit escape and we can navigate through. Now because of those weights we have in there, you can hold down the right and it seems to move at like I think a good pace and this is part of that uh, that weight. So when we hit enter, we can enter that menu and we can hit escape again and now we can move again. So you can see, I'm going to put my character out here on the right. You can see as I'm holding it, my character does not move. So perfect. I want to show you what happens. So it's going to take a little bit of logic here and I'm going to explain to you exactly what's happening. So when we first open the menu, we wait five frames. And really all that is is just to set things up, right? Um, once we enter this new loop, we're just running and checking to see if any buttons are being pressed. And when a button is pressed, you can see here that we have the player wait 10 frames. Now why is it 10 frames? Um, first off, the, the number of frames the player needs to wait is based on how long this loop lasts. So during the first 5 frames, the player can technically move at that time. We wait 10 frames because the button that is pressed waits 10 frames. Now at the end, we have an additional wait. So, during this wait, we want to make sure no other buttons are being pressed, so we wait. We say, hey, you don't allow any other buttons to be pressed at this time. The same thing when we escape. If I were to hold down the escape button, or the menu button, um, and we don't have a wait, it's just going to open. It's because it's happening every frame. It's running this, this menu 
on a parallel event so that parallel event is happening every frame so if I hold on to this button on this menu button for just an extra frame it's going to leave it open and it's going to look a little bit glitchy like I'm going to essentially hold the event the uh, menu button down a little too long and it's going to look like it stayed open right so I think that's okay so and I can show you if we were to reduce this down to five we'll see that the player also stutters so the keys here should be the weight oops did I save those changes yep five five wait five oops sorry that should be 10 this should be 10 as if I told the player to wait only five frames right because he's holding longer than the actual event is so of course he's gonna wait uh, so it's five because it's gonna loop those in five frames so here it's gonna make it more sense you can see uh, that player is able to move for five frames and even that five frames he's able to move just a moment so we're going to keep that player at five because our buttons are allowed to be have a weight of ten frames Ten. Okay. now if I remove this last one and I try to escape and I happen to hold that menu button the escape button a little bit too long you can see how it kind of just flickers because I'm holding it just a tad bit too long. So we want to wait to allow any more commands to happen. So it's important to have these weights in here. And you can manipulate them however you want. You can have every, any value you want. It's up to you. Um, but if anybody has any questions about this, uh, hopefully that's clear. Let me double check, make sure there's no final tidbits I missed um, for this. But I think that's everything. Okay. But yeah, we're not going to worry about the plugin stuff. That's going to be part of the next video if you're interested in um, the touch movement. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you really got a, uh, a lot of enjoyment about this, about this uh, event system. And I really enjoy kind of creating these creative ways without using any scripts um, minus the one script to push the menu um, and being able to create a menu without any plugins so thanks for watching and uh, possibly see you in the next video for the plugin of the touch uh, picture touch menu